What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic with another logic tutorial and uh, if you haven't seen the first one, I would check it out. It's in the playlist. In the first logic tutorial, we just looked at the different gates and what they did as well as the timer. But today we're going to look at, you know, what I think is one of the most uh, essential things in logic and not necessarily the most difficult to understand, but uh, it's used in a lot of different places. It's very, very useful and that is memory. Now, in computers and in, in logic, you can store values, and, and by storing value, I mean you can store a zero or a one. You can keep a circuit on, or you can have that same circuit off. And by doing this, it allows you to do anything. For example, if you have two circuits, then you can control numbers zero through three, because you can go uh, both circuits off, or one circuit, or two, and, uh, and thus you get into binary logic, and you start dealing with binary systems. There's really two ways uh, that I know of, anyways, to make memory in Scrap Mechanic, and I primarily use one method. There is another method which has its advantages and disadvantages, and uh, and we'll look at both of those methods as well as go through some simple examples. After the last tutorial, I talked to a few of you on my Discord, and you guys were saying you want me to try and give you some sort of like homework piece or something you can try on your own to figure it out, and then I'll show that at the beginning of the next tutorial. I'll come up with an idea, and I'll see if you guys can make it happen. So. There's two real types of memory. Uh, we'll, we'll start with the one that I use more often than not, which is uh, the nor, nor, or system. Now, all memory, you need three gates. You can do logic with single gates, but you know, you have to have them glitched to each other. So uh, you can have a, a, an XOR gate. Brent Batch actually has it, and he has an XOR gate that's looped into itself by editing the file. So it's not really uh, done in vanilla, but it is kind of done in vanilla. But regardless, it's just sort of blueprint editing, and uh, we're not going to do that. But we'll, we'll look at the, the basic functions of memory. So for a simple nor nor or memory system, we need two nor gates and an or gate. As soon as we wire these three gates into a continuous loop, so they're in a triangle, the it doesn't really matter. We could we could take this out and we could do it the other way. It's 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 really arbitrary of direction, so we could do it this way as well. And basically what you'll see is we have the nor the one nor gate and the or gate will be on or off, and the other one will be off or on it really it'll it'll depend when you have a nor gate that's connected with only a single input like we've got here then the nor gate is always going to be the opposite of the input and so this circuit actually works quite well because it technically speaking counteracts itself it, it contradicts itself so it says okay this one's on so this is off and because this is off this is on and so if we all of a sudden switch this and we provide this nor gate with a symbol that's on like so then it has to flip. And of course, it'll flip and it, it won't reactivate that NOR gate because we're still giving it two on symbols. So it's saying, okay, I'm, I'm on in my inputs, therefore I have to be off. Same sense if we hook a second button up to this NOR gate, then when we provide an input to this one, it'll flip the circuit over again. And so you've essentially created a, a circuit that can remember whether or not you've turned it on or off. So we've got a simple button like so, and a simple button like so, and now we can turn the circuit on and off. And that's very, very useful. It's a very interesting system. And so it allows you to do just about everything you want. Same sense we could hook this up to a sensor and we could have a sensor as, for example, as one of these inputs. And so we could go, okay, I, I need to stand on the sensor and that sets it and then I could reset it. Stand on the sensor and that sets it and I could reset it. Stand on the sensor and then I reset it with the button. You know, we can also go and replace the button with a timer. So we can say, okay, here's my timer. I hook my timer into my OR gate, which will call our output. And then so I can say, okay, I stand on the sensor, the timer goes, and then after the timer, it resets. Stand on the sensor, timer resets. So there's a lot of different things we can do with memory. Uh, this is obviously a very simple example. This is, you know, very commonly used if you want to have a, uh, a simple door, for example. So we could have a bearing here and we could take a controller and we could just take our controller and our bearing and let's say this is our door, right? And then we could just, you know, have this on a simple circuit and we hook that into the OR gate so that whenever, uh, hopefully this opens outwards. Yeah, we'll open it that way. So whenever we stand on the sensor, it'll open the door for the time on the timer, right? So we could, in, in theory, uh, make very very simple automatic doors this way and again this is just using a simple memory bit and so now you can see we have a door that stays open for four seconds and then it'll close one of the things that you got to worry about when you're dealing with memory is when you're spawning creations on the lift so if we were to actually create that same memory block but let's just create it on a a simple piece of concrete here 
And so we've got our simple memory circuit again with an OR gate, a NOR gate, and a NOR gate. Now, as soon as we spawn this on the lift, watch what's gonna happen. When we put this on the lift, you see both of these gates are flashing. And the reason why is when the circuit first starts, neither of the two values has been lit up yet. So technically speaking, both of them are trying to stay on at the same time. And the circuit just gets into this permanent state of flux. And so there's a simple way to, to solve that obviously, which is by just resetting one of the two. So in order to solve this problem, all we gotta do is have an AND condition. And so this is the OR gate condition for this bit. So we say, okay, this one is on. And if this starting bit is on at the same time, then we'll reset that one. And now what'll happen is technically speaking, when you spawn this on the lift and all the gates are on at the same time and both NOR gates are counteracting each other, the AND gate condition will be solved and it will, you know, rectify the bit. And that will be that. So that's the easiest way to make a memory bit reset. And then of course, now we've got our two buttons here and we could just, you know, toggle back and forth. So this is great if you wanna, you know, turn a, a switch into a button. Obviously you could use a switch, um, but in, in memory terms, when you're using memory, uh, you don't usually use memory for the button purposes. You use it more for continuing a function or something like that, or you have logic or a timer or a timer that sets off a series of memory or something. Usually there's some other circuitry going on at the same time. So this is the nor nor or uh, method of memory. We're gonna go look at the other type that I know of first, and then we're gonna sort of compare the two. So the second type of memory we're gonna look at is the, uh, the exclusive OR memory. So exclusive OR gates are kind of interesting because an exclusive OR gate says it's only activated if one of its, of one of its linked triggers are active, which means it's active if any one of its inputs are active, but not multiple inputs. So if we have an exclusive OR gate with only a single input, then it is always active if its input is active and it's always deactivated if its input is deactivated. And so this is the, the very compact form of memory. Instead of using three gates, we could do this with one if we had a self-wired exclusive OR gate. And again, that's something that Brent Batch has done. And basically what happens is if we trigger the exclusive OR gate, then it will keep itself on and this loop will always stay active. And if we trigger it again, it'll shut itself off. So if we hook a button in, you can watch if we click it, it will trigger the gate on and it thus triggers the loop. And now because we've hit the button once, it was exclusive and this gate was not lit up. So it lit up the exclusive OR gate, which in turn lit up this gate, lit up this gate, and now is maintaining that exclusive OR gate on. Now, if we activate the second input, then two inputs are lit up, which means the exclusive OR gate has to shut off. Oh, and I didn't do it quick enough. And thus, here comes the problem of the exclusive OR gate. So the exclusive OR gate has to run on a very quick one tick system where you have to send only a single tick, so a single piece of logic, a single calculation, if you will, to the gate in order for it to trigger on and then again for it to trigger off. Otherwise it gets into an infinite pulsing condition where it's always on and always off and it just gets to be a nightmare. So in order to do that, we generate a really simple tick generator, which is just a timer with an exclusive OR gate, right? And so if we hook a button into a timer and an exclusive OR gate, and then the timer into the exclusive OR gate, you end up with a tick generator. And the same principle is over here, as long as only one of the inputs are activated, the exclusive OR gate will be activated. So for the time in which you're holding the button to the timer finishes executing, you only have a tick. Now, to eliminate that second tick that we're getting when we let go of the button, all we have to do is hook the exclusive OR gate into an AND gate. And now that AND gate will only tick when we press the button down because that completes the AND condition. And so then we send this to the exclusive OR gate and we've created exclusive or memory. And so a uh, really bad angle here, but every time we hit the button, you can see, and we can kind of hold it for a bit, doesn't matter, it will trigger that system once. Now, if we tap it, we can still cause this gate system to screw up. And so the solution for that, we can really simply just put an AND gate and we can have an AND gate as like sort of an override switch. So we can have this turned on. Now we tap it, reset, tap it, reset, and let's say we get it screwed up. Oh, okay, I fixed it somehow. Let's say we get it screwed up. There we go, like it's flashing. We can turn that gate off, turn it back on, and it resets the circuit. If you can self-wire this with blueprint editing like Brent Batch does, uh, then you've created an extremely fast system because now you've taken these three logic gates and turned it into one. The only reason we actually need three is because you can't self-wire a gate to itself. For example, if I have like not, not in vanilla anyway. So if I have a gate here and a gate here, I can wire this one to feed into that one. 
but if I try and wire this one to feed back, it simply just removes the connection. The advantage of the NOR system is you can have infinite number of memory loop inputs feeding each of the, the buttons. So for example, I can do this. I could have five buttons all feeding this gate, and no matter which one I press, any one of them will complete the circuit. The other advantage of this cir circuit is, as you can see there, even if we do tap it and get it into a pulsing condition, if we hold one of the buttons, it will automatically reset that pulsing condition. The other nice thing I like about the NOR, NOR system is uh, is the fact that the input is not dependent on the length that you're holding the button. The advantages of the XOR system, obviously, if you can self-wire it by blueprint editing, you have the fastest form of memory, uh, which is great if you're doing really complex creations. It'll also cut down on the number of logic blocks you need and the amount of space. Pretty much anything you want to do with memory, you can make work with either form. I prefer this form just because, you know, that's what I've always used and uh, that's what I'm good with, but this works just as well and they can do the exact same functions. It just depends on really how you want to use them and how you set them up. And uh, of course we could always, you know, feed various amounts of logic into various other amounts of logic and do all sorts of crazy things with memory. I think this is a pretty good concept to try and master. Uh, memory is one of the most useful things, again, you can use in scrap mechanic. The cruise control that I did for cars, for example, works on memory. The autopilot stuff all works on memory. Um, you know, the, the self-stabilization stuff doesn't so much, but the uh, all the autopilot stuff does. The fuel cell vehicle does for sure, and uh, it has memory as well. So does the realistic helicopter. It actually uses memory and the time to reset memory in order to figure out how fast it's spinning. So there's a whole, series of functions you can do if you master these simple uh, loops of logic. So I would encourage you to play around with them and check them out and uh, definitely go try them. For those of you guys who want something to do and uh, want to try to do something with memory, have sort of a project, I encourage you to use a bunch of memory in one way or another to make a multiple digital pad selector. So you have, let's say, a digital pad like this which is numbers, you know, zero through nine, zero at the bottom, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine type thing. And uh, using memory, whether or not you want to use binary or not, uh, make something that allows you to select each of these numbers. And when you hit the button, it will, you know, display that number or turn on one of the numbered lights in sequence or whatever. So you can have like a row of nine lights. And when you hit one of the buttons, it will turn on one of the nine lights, let's say. And when you hit the zero button, it'll turn off all the lights. So try and see if you can do that. Uh, and uh, I'll show you guys how I do it next week. And if you do do it, make sure you go check out my Discord in the description below and post how you did it or post a screenshot or whatever, or even a, a small clip or, you know, send me the creation and I'll check it out. Make sure you guys check out the Discord and uh, of course, post your comments down below for other logic tutorials you'd like to see and other suggestions for logic. And uh, make sure you guys hit that like button and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see y'all next time.